Um, it's a great delight to welcome you um, to the third Chase Encounters. Um, the most important thing to say is obviously welcome, but also congratulations to our new students, our second cohort of Chase students. And we're absolutely delighted um, uh, to have you here. This is obviously the first time that we've had uh, the first and the second year of Chase students together. Um, it's particularly um, uh, a, a particular pleasure to be here at the Open University and, and to hold encounters here because, as you, I'm sure you all know, the Open University is an institution synonymous, really, with education as a means to social equality and social justice, and those ideals, I'm sure, are close to, an, uh, to most of us in this room. It's been a real, I mean, the OU has been a, a, a member of Chase since the beginning, and it's been a particular, it's been a personal pleasure to me to work with them, um, and in particular Paul Lawrence, uh, to, to really bring Chase together and to, to think about research and, and how you bring research into the public domain, which the Open University have obviously got absolutely huge expertise in, and we all benefit enormously from that. I mean, having you all together today is an opportunity for me to say a few words about Chase, um, particularly for our new students. Our second years, you know, you'll be hearing some of this again, but it's possible that it will make some more sense to you now than it did when you first started. Um, it's also an opportunity to say thank you to the people who work so hard, um, not only to get today together, um, Claire Hunt always makes this look easy, but I'm sure it isn't, um, but to introduce you to the Chase um, central team, as we call them, based at Sussex, and, and also to thank our student advisory group, um, who will be, Chris Timms will be um, introducing the student advisory group immediately after me. They've done an enormous amount of work on behalf of Chase over the past year, bringing the students right into the heart of the planning of Chase, which has been part of our goal from the start. Um, so I just wanted, if it's all right with the Chase Central team for our first years, to just name and shame them. And if you could just wave and say hi, it's Rob Witts, who's the Chase manager. Steve Colburn, who's the Chase Placements Officer, is over there, and Claire Hunt, who is sitting next to him. Um, and you'll be in contact. They're based at Sussex, and you'll be in contact with them throughout the year. You will be getting various um, emails, messages, newsletters, etc., from Chase Central. Um, so do introduce yourselves today if you haven't already met them. Um, Again, for our first years, it does go without saying, but I, I will say it anyway, that we offer our warmest congratulations to you um, for getting a Chase Award. It's extremely difficult in the current um, funding climate to get a PhD award, so you've done incredibly well. Um, from our point of view, it's an enormous pleasure um, to see the quality of the of the proposals that come through to us. I mean, the sheer intellectual innovation and uniqueness that is in these proposals is, is truly stunning and it's a great, I speak for all the supervisors at Chase when I say, you know, we are delighted and privileged to be able to work with you as you go forward at this vital stage in your research career. I'm hoping that you've all received the Chase handbook so I don't need to say too much about the structure of Chase. Um, just to say that we are nine institutions um, we, we have an Arts and Humanities Research Council award, obviously, and we give out around 75 awards per year. Um, we, we have um, PhDs and associate Chase PhDs across the entire nine institutions, so you are a network of researchers that runs from Norwich to Brighton and you know, little forays into London. And that's a huge network of researchers, faculty and doctoral students, which is your kind of, your basic practical um, experience of Chase is this network of, of researchers and what it can bring to you as you're doing your doctoral um, research. Again, um, it's not easy to do a PhD, and I remember saying this to our first years last year, 
And I, I said it's exhilarating, it's fascinating, it's also daunting. And if you know, if you have conversations about that today, um, I'm sure you will benefit from talking. The people who are new um, to their PhD will benefit a lot from talking to people who are just one year on, because that's a third of the way through of a three-year PhD. So you'll have a you'll have a sense in the second year of what I meant by that. And we'd be interested to know, you know, how you are drawing on Chase and its resources as you go through, because the kind of the use you make of Chase and the network will do differ depending on where, what stage you are at um, and what you feel you need to know and what you feel you need some support in. Um, so that's, I think that's the first thing that Chase means to you as doctoral researchers is this network. Um, and I hope it's becoming clearer, I mean, particularly for those of you in your second year, how we can actually support you in your research. You may have already attended more than one training event. I mean, so I know some people are, are attending quite a lot of different things. Um, and it, it, that environment is really important. I mean, it's obvious that the supervisor-student relationship is absolutely crucial to your research. But this, beyond the supervision, what is this environment, this research environment about, and what's it going to be able to give to you? Um, I mean, in the first instance, it's very much about supporting, you know, in particular research skills that you might need that will go beyond the supervision, whether that's an acquisition of a language, archive skills, um, I mean, w one of the slides that's coming up here at the moment, I think, comes from our material witness program. Those are kinds of skills that you, you, know, you can't really get in a supervision situation. You need to go out of the super supervisory relationship and into a wider network of people to actually get those kinds of skills. So that's the first and kind of obvious thing. You know, what do I need to bring my research to completion? This skill, that skill, I need to do this, I need to do that. That's the first um, uh, and most obvious aspect of it. Um, less obviously, I mean, a lot of you are working in emerging fields of research or working on inter interdisciplinary type projects, or even, even if you feel that you're quite solidly within your discipline, you're still making an intervention in your field. And as you do that, you'll be coming up against research questions for which there are no established methodologies. That's part of what it means to do a PhD and to intervene in a field. You're bound to be coming up against things that are, are new and original. And one of the ways in which you can um, move the work forward is by joining together, collaborating with, talking with, conversing with people who might, might be working actually in a very different discipline, but are coming up against similar kinds of methodological issues. Um, to, when we were putting Chase together, one of the one of the sort of experiments we did was a, a program called Humanities and Human Rights. And that was a kind of classic example, really, of the way in which you can bring people together from different disciplines who are all working on human rights from a humanities perspective and really get together and talk about what the research questions are and the links between those different areas. And it was an absolutely fantastic program. And that's the kind of... Um, the kind of experiment that we're doing, really, with our faculty and our doctoral researchers is trying to develop programmes that support the particular cohorts that we have at the moment. And those kinds of conversations, that they're bespoke, in a sense. They depend on, on who you are and what you bring into Chase. That's why there's not a kind of you know, solid, stable programme. It's going to change depending on who you are and your research needs. So, I mean, I... I want to conclude, really, by asking you to keep that kind of distinction in mind when you think about how you might use Chase. There's the question of your thesis, the research that you're here to bring to completion, and we will support you as much as we possibly can in doing that. But there's also you as a researcher. You're developing as a researcher as you undertake your thesis, and that's, that's a whole set of skills that go beyond the thesis. So your research and you are going to feel yeah, very tightly bound together, but they are separate. And you can think about how to develop as a researcher. The thesis is probably the first, or may not even be the first. You might have quite significant research skills already. But it may be the first major research project that you're undertaking, but it won't be the last. And there will be skills that you can take from the research, the, the thesis, and move into other fields. 
and onto other projects. And it's that bit as well that we want to support and tease out and really, you know, develop stuff that will help you um, to do that. Um, my sense is that the way in which that support happens best is conversations between yourselves and your unit, you know, between you, with your peers. So we build in a lot of spaces in these days for you to actually get together and talk, and a lot of it was taking place outside just now. The, the amount of work you're doing in those conversations is, is actually, you know, it may, it may not always be obvious, but there's a whole load of stuff taking place when you do that. The student advisory group have had a lot of input in, in today, and I'm going to hand over in a moment to Chris Timms to talk about that, have put together some um, um, working groups for this afternoon, which are a bit more structured. But please use every opportunity today to talk to one another, because that's where you, know, you really get the value added of being in Chase, is when you talk to one another. Um, please don't forget to come talk to me. Please introduce yourselves, because you know I'm... One of the great pleasures of this job is actually talking to people about their research. Um, I only want to say good luck now to you for the rest of your research um, at Chase. And I'm going to hand over to Chris. Thanks, Chris.